as dawn begins, the feeling is that it's the dawn of a new species, that it's basically intelligent apes have inherited the earth. And over the course of the story, you start seeing what they've created. Caesar sets about you know, creating this utopia, really, for all apes and equality and, and an egalitarian society with human beings not being part of it whatsoever. And it's almost a kind of, I wouldn't say Eden, because that's a little bit too um, sort of I idyllic, but you, you see the purity and, and the beauty of what they've created, and you see them as a family and as these creatures who are, in a way, kind of paralleling our own evolution, if that makes sense. There's a kind of tribal existence, a tribal phase that they're in. <laughs> Caesar has become something of a king within this community, uh, or at least a leader, and uh, he's really informed the way all the apes treat each other, and they look to him not only for leadership, but also for moral guidance. <laughs> There are about 2,000 other apes and young chimps being born, new generations, and the place where they live has an aqueduct and there's a water system. They have a very evolved community. And the three ape laws are apes together strong, ape shall not kill ape, and knowledge is power. And they form the basis of the ape creed. And they are a kind of reduction, I think, of everything that Caesar has learned and also has exchanged with the, with, with the other apes um, to distill that into something that is practical and actually means something. Um, obviously, not killing one another is a very straightforward thing, but knowledge is power. It's important to Caesar that the apes are educated, and we see that very early on in the film. We see the young chimps are being taught language. It is a very egalitarian society, which also plays into Apes Together Strong, which, of course, is a motif that comes through from Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The world is a world that's being reclaimed by nature, and that was really the kickoff for us, was trying to imagine how our world would react without humans. And so we did a lot of research into the way nature would reclaim the earth. And at the same time, you know, the birth of a new civilization. So trying to see, you know, the first steps in how primitive society would evolve and uh, just an amazing opportunity on a design level to look at primates and the way they live and then trying to advance that a few steps in the evolutionary chain and see how they would build their world. You're at the prop truck where we have been storing a lot of the weapons that we made for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. The methodology really and the, the, for the movie was that we were trying to promote uh, the concept that the apes were went back to the forest, rejected uh, anything that was human, and made their own weapons out of natural materials and wouldn't use any found objects from civilization. We used a lot of natural objects like real bone and teeth and things that were scavenged and bought from around the country. And we basically uh, put together prototype pieces and then if we liked them we'd mold them as well, make rubber stunt versions of them. and. Uh, so here's a good example of a piece of found, found driftwood and adding, uh, you know, the antler and teeth to it, wrapping it in gut, painting it, um, charring it and burnishing it. That's the kind of, was the methodology. This is a real lower jaw, I think, of a moose. And again, we've got um, everything from boar tusks to a uh, little bear and some claws, different things, kind of pieces like this, and we would wrap them again, burn, burnish, add a little bit of detail down here as well. These are some of the spears that we made, and you know, we tried to differentiate the spears and their weaponry uh, in two categories, really. One is for hunting, and so hunting spears looked more like this. They're throwing spears, a little bit more streamlined, get some air, get some distance. 
we decided to make a bunch of, of more exaggerated ones, basically as a line of defense, um, more to scare people, more as, a, as an effigy of, uh, of aggression, but not really used on a regular basis. So it's almost like hanging the skeleton on a stick outside of your village. It doesn't mean that you're a cannibal. It just means beware, we're violent people, but they're not really. Certainly one of the biggest challenges I had when working on the screenplay is how much should the apes talk, if at all. At the end of the last film, there's this big shocker uh, that Caesar is able to actually emote a whole sentence. Caesar is home. So we open up this possibility of how much language would the apes have. Do any, any of the apes other than Caesar have the ability to speak? We struggled a lot with this because there's a temptation, obviously, to give the apes just tons of dialogue. It certainly makes scenes go a lot easier if everybody can express what's on their minds. But there was a plausibility issue that we were contending with, which is uh, it's only been 10 years, and how, if he's only able to say one sentence in the last film, how much speech would he really be capable of? The second question was, why would they need to speak? They were able to communicate beforehand as apes, and they developed sign language, or at least Caesar and Maurice had. Why would they want to talk like humans, or why would they need to? And so the solution we came up with was that they've developed an ape version of sign language. So it's sort of ape-specific, um, but is, is based on American sign language, which is what Maurice and Caesar had both learned when they were young. We've actually done a great amount of research with both primatologists and sign language experts to make our own version of apes sign language. So though it's based in American sign language, because that's what Caesar used, that's what Will had taught him in the first movie, but we've taken that and we've adapted it to how the apes would actually communicate. So we have gestures for uh, their names, like Caesar, Koba. Koba where? <laughs> It'll all be spelled out in subtitles, but anybody out there that knows sign language might be like, wait a second, I don't quite recognize that symbol, but it's part of the, the apification of that language. Uh, additionally, their vocalization has progressed a bit. You know, like I said, we're not, we're not having them speak proper English, but there are certainly more guttural words and things like that. There's definitely more speech. <laughs> We were very specific, character-wise, about how each of the apes handled language. Um, Rocket, for instance, has a young son called Ash, and Ash would be better at picking up sign language and human words because he's of the younger generation, and younger generations always tend to learn quicker. Cobra hates humans. He very much wants to steer clear, but when he's completely angry, it what we're trying to show also is that in anger, words are very useful because they're very quick and very direct. Where's Caesar? One Caesar! Caesar! It was something very nice to play with, that words would formulate purely through anger for my character. You know, with other people, it, it's more intellectual, it's more thought out and considered. But with, with Cobra, it's very much a guttural thing to get the words out. Apes win war! There's a real sort of tipping point between what sounds overly human and what sounds correct in, in the mouths of these apes. And it's, that, that was always a pitching, a real pitching challenge all the way through the entire movie, I think. And, you know, you can read a lot through just their facial expressions, all of the apes' facial expressions, without them uttering a word. And so it's about how much you need to convey with language. Father. The issue that Matt and I were really interested in was to what extent is the humanness that the apes have inherited is it coupled with a gray area of morality that maybe wouldn't exist if they were just apes. So the, the simpler way to put that is Caesar says, I never realized just how human we are. Trust. That's sort of the tragedy, and really, what to me is so exciting is it does that Planet of the Apes mirroring thing, where in the original film you watch the apes and you say, oh, I never realized how animal we humans are, and it's really just flipping it around. We are survivors! Now they may have got their hands on some of our guns, but that does not 
Make them next! What are you doing, man? I don't see. 